What's up, everyone? This is Bold here. I am back again with episode four of Let's Play Allies Online. Rocking my fedora still, and the brass knuckles, same as last video. Uh, this time around, we're gonna go kill some termites, and we're gonna make some pretty quick work of it, I believe. A uh, quick note about the warden that I've noticed so far is you always want to send the pet in first, so uh, let him take the first hit if possible. Most mobs he's holding aggro so far. I'm sure later, you know, you kind of peel off him. He's just kind of there for the extra damage. Then again, he might actually get quite a bit better. I have yet to actually have a high level warden, so I guess I'll find that out in time. Interesting side note, the shed to my left over there in the distance can house one of the Red Ring Elites that I've mentioned previously, in previous video videos. Um, you really don't want to mess with him. I believe he's, at this point, he's a level 9, I want to say, Termite. He's named. And if you kill him, it's, pretty much, it's a guaranteed blue item drop. But you, you probably need to be a few levels above him. Not be bad like I am. So I'm not gonna mess with him today. And he's not even there actually, so works for me. Now there's two, actually two places for this quest you can do because you actually have to pick up stones and kill termites to get meat. And uh, also kill a certain quantity of termites for this. So. Typically you would go just straight up to the left from where you actually pick the quest up in the, uh, I believe it's the Zoom Quarter. But if you go pretty much directly north to where I was just at, there's more termites there. Whereas in this other spot over here, this is where more of the stones are that you would pick up, so you can do that real quick. Kill me a couple termites, probably. We've seen the distance over there. That's a, that's a rare spawn elite. Uh, I believe they drop green gear pretty much always, so those are soloable. They hit a little bit harder and have quite a bit more health than normal. If you'll notice, my health is kind of chewing down, so I kind of kite for a second here. I am. The furthest from pro with Warden as you can get, so. Been experimenting with other classes like the Savant. Other pet class, basically. Get an idea. So we're gonna come back and turn in all the termite junk now. And we should be on to the Astral Quarter here in a second. Alright, there's the level. You always want to stay on top of these chests because the gear you get from them is quite awesome. The chest of the adventurer, primarily. Interesting little tidbit about the recruit chests that I'm using here. You can actually save them up. So, for example, what I should have done was save up about five or six of them before level 10. Uh, that's something I don't do. But you can save them up and whenever my character converts to leather armor at level 10, it would have started replacing my gear with useful items. Once again, I, I did not end up doing this, but it's something that's actually really awesome to do right before an armor change. So, keep that in mind. I'd like to think I have a nice uh, quest flow. Do everything in order, you know. There are certain things that I skip out on. It's whatever, though. I try to level as effectively as possible while upgrading as much gear as possible because if you let a few items slip behind, it really starts to show. And your character actually takes a lot of damage, so. Right now I'm picking up just a couple of the green items from the 
Nezabgrad, I believe, city council. Uh, you should get enough rep to get, you know, at least like the friendly and the trusted reputation with them, which should get you green gear. Uh, if you actually go to the Bork Quarter, though, there's a repeatable quest to go kill ten rats, and you can do it over and over and over for, I think, a thousand rep at a time, and you can actually max out your rep at 25,000. Uh, and if you do that, you can buy blue gear for a level nine. But, again, going with the leveling effectively and efficiently and all that, uh, you pretty much skip over that whole deal. There's no use actually dumping all that time into getting level 9 blues when you're just going to bypass and jump straight outside of town and max out that rep instead. As you see, I just took off the uh, little casual garment. So gear does change the look of your character. I was just, uh, just using the shaman fashion for a while. The blue quest the marker that I actually passed up was a group quest. It's one of the aqua ring elites. Typically if you're leveling through this area you just want to kind of look at it as you walk by because you can occasionally find someone standing there and for the most part that guy can actually be two manned. So if someone's standing there waiting around it's not a bad idea to say hey you want to do this and knock out the quest. I mean if no one's waiting around for it, it kind of takes a, a good few to find someone. So I, I usually skip out on it if there's no one there. I love this spot. It's all about spiders here, so you just kind of run around and slaughter as many as you can. It's a little tedious being, you know, most of the quests are loot this, loot that at this point, but it's a really nice break when you see later and you have to go out and kill a bunch of stuff over and over. There's definitely a lot more quests than just killing, but, you know, follow with your standard online MMO style thing, you know, you gotta have a lot of killing. Oh man, how useful it is to have a pet. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to be using a proper build or not, as far as talents and rubies are concerned, but uh, we'll figure that out in a bit. If you want to look for... One of the best ideas is to look for a proper build. And your talent trainer in the middle of town will let you reset your talents and the rubies and all that good stuff any time you want up to level 15. Past that point, they're like, hey, screw you. We need an item shop item. So uh, it's either going to cost you a lot of gold or you're going to spend a little bit of cash to respec. So it's quite important to figure out by like level 15 what exactly you want to do. So experiment with as many abilities as you can before level 15. Starting to level up that patron again. Always got to be on top of that. Don't need to kill that guy, I'm just going to anyway. Uh, as far as stat priority, go into that a little bit as much as I can tell you without lying. You have perception, which increases or reduces all damage dealt and such. Uh, it also affects your spell hit chance. It's your most important stat for Warden. 
Uh, I believe it also affects your melee hit chance as well. Um, not 100% on that yet. But it would make sense for a hybrid class. Your next most important stat obviously would be Intellect, which is the strength equivalent for a caster. It just adds a damage multiplier and beefs up everything you do. The stat after that would obviously be Luck. Luck affects your crit chance and also affects your glancing blows. That's one of the most important factors about Luck, actually. It is not the chance to deal big damage, it's the making sure that you don't deal half damage. Because <laughs> glancing blows will kill you later, actually. Quite often. It sucks. So make sure your luck is is good. Wisdom is the least important stat, I think. Uh, it also increases or decreases effectiveness of all spells and healing and things of the sort. I hate wisdom. I do nothing but just barely keep it out of the red. And by that I mean if one of your stats gets too low, it'll start. It'll put a red arrow moving downward next to one of your stats if it's too low for your level, which is a cool feature, you know, kind of keeps you from forgetting stats. I believe later on you also need faith with a warden, because it affects your healing, I want to say, and if you want to be a well-rounded or even one-sided character as far as casting or meleeing, you know, it would be nice to balance up. Of course, I'm going to side with the shamans here. You get the choice of shaman or warrior. And of course, come on, I'm shaman. I'll throw lightning. See, I got a few different quest turn ins here spread out. Oh yeah, I gotta turn into this guy because next follow-up here will be to go talk to a few people. I believe one of them is actually in this quarter, one's in Bort, and one's in Hadron. So it's just it's one of those easy ones that I always just pick up. And, so let's do it. Over to my right is the area I was mentioning before with the rats. So, if you want to keep that in mind, if, you, if you're really, like, rep-based and you want to get it done, go for it. It's just a waste of my time at this point, though, unfortunately. Ah, uh -huh. I was lying. It's close to the Hadron Quarter. Not quite. But if you do, like, your little what I did. You port into the port, talk to the one guy, just keep running, run through the next one, then port back from Hadron. It's just the way I found is most effective. Alright, gonna go to the middle of Yasker's Tower here now. Now pretty much every time you go to Yasker's Tower and you've leveled up like a couple times, always check the guide because it's free experience and he pretty much always tells you to go, hey, go to the tower and talk to someone. Yeah. More of the item shop thing. Buy a couple things that cost nothing and turn it in for free experience. Okay. So I'm going to get a couple turn-ins here. Keep in mind to always get your patron blessing from downstairs. Uh, unfortunately, I'm actually running out of time. So, if you liked the video, a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, let me know how I'm doing. Um, yeah, until next time, guys. This is Bulg, and I'll see you in episode 5.